Hey guys, Tyler here. For this video, I'm gonna talk about the top five epic fails from YouTuber Vosh. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Every single time I'm on my computer and using social media, just typing away at all the crazy stuff on my timeline, I'm almost always finding clips from this YouTuber named Vosh. Apparently, Sean Head is a fan and also a friend of this YouTuber, and that she actually agrees on like every single topic that he talks about when it comes down to politics. However, every single time I find a clip from this YouTuber, I almost always cringe. So, without further hesitation, let's talk about the top five failures from this YouTuber. At number five is the fact that the YouTuber actually defends the legalization of CP. According to this guy, apparently because computers are made in sweatshops, thus also justifies the legalization of this type of nonsense. Okay, so if you were to, so, you know, there's pedophiles, right, who buy child pornography? Mm -hmm. Would you say they should not be held responsible for doing that? Yes. Really? Even though mm -hmm. they're directly supporting child rape? Yeah. I think that's, it's, uh, it's hypocritical. If, if I, because I, I bought my computer and the silicon in it was farmed in Africa by slaves. If I can do that and that's legal that's... and no one's going to call me out in my shit, then yeah, I have to be consistent in that respect. His whole entire argument is just morally reprehensible because it's entirely possible to be against both. I hate sweatshops. I think it's awful that people work in those kind of conditions. I also think that, of course, like there's data that shows the after effects and psychological harm that is being done by children thanks to child pornography. So to me at least, both things are awful. And just because one thing's okay, right now at least, does not mean you could justify the other bad thing. It just does not make any sense to me. I love how he assumes that every single black conservative sound exactly the same because of their race. And that to me is the most racist statement I probably ever heard besides the quotation from Joe Biden. Joe Biden believes we can't think for ourselves, that the color of someone's skin dictates their political views. All right. Here's my theory. There is exactly one black woman who's voting Republican and it's Candace Owens and she has a cloning facility somewhere because every single motherfucking black woman in America talks the exact same way. The exact same fucking way, okay? Holy shit. First of all, they all do that with their hair. I've never seen a black woman repping Republicans who had kinky hair. Second of all, to gone are the days where the Democrats will keep us on their plantation. It's the exact same shit every time. Obviously, every single black person has, of course, autonomy about their political beliefs. And so that means that there are different black people from different points of views when it comes down to politics. And so not every single black person is going to agree on like politics and of course, every single black person have their own personal style, have their own personal kind of speech pattern, and so on and so forth. So to me at least, to say that a black person who is conservative talk a certain way or dress a certain way, that to me is very offensive because not every single person looked that way. And also, when you criticize a person, it's very important to criticize their ideas and not actually drag someone's race because of that. I don't think that just because someone is black doesn't mean I need to shame somebody just because they're a certain race and vote someone who's actually different than me. That to me is racism. Speaking about black people, this dude actually thinks that black people should not defend themselves from lynching mobs. During this whole entire debate with Destiny, this dude actually has the audacity, actually has the balls to say that even in self-defense, like you need to actually submit yourself to the mob 
And he also thinks that of course in that situation if a black person was being chased down that that person should not use self-defense. If somebody, if a mob of people, this is what you're arguing, if a mob of people has perceived that you've committed a crime and they decide that it's on them to enact justice against you and you don't feel you've committed a crime, I think you have every right to defend yourself. What you're arguing for, and I'm gonna virtue signal some more, how many times does a white woman scream and a black guy is like retreating from some area and a bunch of white people hunt him down because they think that black dude raped the white woman? Like historically, this has actually been a pretty big part of like American history. Except and the fact that you would say, well, you know, if they really feel like that guy that had committed a crime, I mean, commit a wait wait hold on wait 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 your argument just supports me so assuming we're not talking what? about the black guy wait hold on so assuming we're not talking about the black guy literally being lynched so assuming we're talking about like a mob attempt at like getting them or something yeah so there's no yeah. implicit lethal threat on the part of the pe sure. people chasing that black guy and the black guy himself uh -huh. does not have a weapon uh as you haven't accounted for in this situation uh, I, I assume, unless he's like carrying for some reason. In that okay. case, it would be best for that black guy to then stop and let himself be arrested rather than to kill everyone chasing him for thinking that he had just committed a rape. <laughs> Now, in the past, of course, United States was actually way more racist than it is now. Like, way, way more racist. However, if that black person, in that scenario right there, turned himself to the police, do you honestly think that the police in that scenario, during racist America, would actually believe the black guy that he was actually in the wrong? I don't think so. I really don't think so. Because back then, we actually had institutionalized racism. And so, I don't think for a single second that anyone, even the police officers during that situation, would actually defend the black guy. And so, when the black guy is running from that, that group of people trying to hurt him, I think it's justified for that self-defense because they want to bring harm to that black person because they want to lynch that black person. It's obviously, it's obvious that that kind of scenario is actually justified for self-defense. Another thing that's just really awful about Vosh is how he says that we need to listen and believe, of course, women for a sexual assault and rape. However, the minute, the minute a woman says something against Islamic rape culture, he immediately changed his mind. Here's the exact clip that I'm talking about where he goes into like details about why he actually supports Me Too. And this happened. I just want to say, do you think it maybe speaks a little bit to the fact that we have a rape culture when we put six people in a room together to talk about Me Too and the four, when they're like, hey, who of you have experienced sexual assault? And the four women sit down and they've all been raped and they all can barely choke out a coherent sentence. Uh, uh, um, like... Does it, do we think this perhaps maybe slightly speaks to the fact that there's a problem? Like, huh, Me Too has gone too far. False allegations are ruining people's lives. Okay. Who among you have experienced sexual assault? And, like, every woman in the room starts crying? Like, what? <laughs> I almost every female friend I have has been uh, ex ex the the recipient of sexual assault or violence or rape or whatever at some point in their lives. Seriously, it's such a common thing. I think one in four is probably understating it significantly. I wouldn't be surprised if the rate for sexual assault on women over one's lifetime was as high as one in three or one in two. We just don't know because nobody fucking reports because reports aren't taken seriously. That's what Me Too is about. Here, like, I don't think things are on the same level, but things impact you in, like, bizarre ways. But, yeah, like, because the perpetrator wasn't white, um, and because he was, like, I, I'm, you know, part of, like, a certain religion. Oh, wait. Are we being real? I mean, the police were basically just, like, we can't because, um, of cultural differences, which I don't feel like is such a good... What? Bull 
shit. Are you fucking kidding me? Did she turn her fucking rape confession into how, onto how the rape fugees, fucking Ahmed Muhammad, raped her and the police were like, oh, we can't persecute brown people. Bullshit. Bullshit. I'm not sure if Vosh is very familiar with Islamic culture or the Quran, but it's very clear, very, very clear that the culture and the religion supports rape culture. Now, obviously, obviously, not every single Muslim's a rapist. I want to first make that clear because there are good Muslims and there are bad Muslims. However, their own freaking prophet, Muhammad, raped a nine-year-old girl. A freaking nine-year-old girl. And so basically, in many parts of the whole entire world, where there actually are Muslim majority, there are some people who want to also rape nine-year-old little girls. There's also various parts of Europe that have a rape culture thanks to the influx of people from Islamic countries. And so, let's take, for example, United Kingdom. They actually have a really bad grooming gang. And whenever somebody calls for rape from that grooming gang like United Kingdom, they will not believe them because they don't want to be actually called racist. And so, there are actually police officers out there in United Kingdom that would not actually believe rape victims because of Islamic culture. So yes, there actually is a problem with Islamic rape culture and it's not actually a bad thing to talk about it. I agree! And since being a fascist is implicitly violent, violence against them is self-defense. So just to recap the top 5 listing for you guys, basically he defended child pornography and said that because of course computers are made by child laborers, that's actually justification for child pornography. He also justified violence against political opponents who are fascists apparently. He also said that if you were like a sexual assault victim from Islam, he does not believe you whatsoever. He also thinks, <laughs> oh my god, all of it is just awful. He also thinks that freaking like if you're a black person, you deserve to get lynched. He thinks that black people who are conservative talk alike and look alike. This guy has a really very insane ideology. And honestly, I have no freaking clue why, did, why anybody at all actually follows this guy. But what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below and I'll see you guys next time. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I won't <laughs> trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.